Okay, I've been sent a saw by Evolution. Evolution good, rage bad. Evolution is a company that puts a British flag on its boxes under some words about location specific design innovation. I don't know if this is anything to be proud of. I'm not sure what the innovation is, but if I notice something, I will come back to you. I have to admit, I like the name of the company. It subliminally spreads the subversive idea of evolution to the American market, so I can't fault them on that. But the saw is lacking in key places. Well, this saw is anyway. When you get a new saw, the first thing you want to do is check it for accuracy. I'm going to be using this engineer straight edge. I'm going to be using two engineer squares. I'm also going to use these feeler gauges just to help me identify gaps. And I also have a bevel box. I placed the straight edge against the table and checked how flat everything was. The rotating section of the saw is about 2mm higher than the outer wings. This isn't a good start because if any material is clamped or held down, it will lift and change the angle of the cut. Probably not a major problem for a Sunday DIYer, but if you want to do something other than show off your masculinity to your wife, this is something we'll have to fix. This is something that will have to be addressed. This is something that should be fixed. You're not listening to me. I tried tightening a nut under the machine, but that only clamped the pivoting mechanism and the bed height stayed the same. The fence can be adjusted to the blade, which is good, but the angle from the face to the bed is off. You can see it leaning forward at the top and the light bleed at the bottom. That's fully tightened and that's not square there. Not square there either. The movable section of the fence is also not flat with the lower section. I can tell though just with my finger that the top section must have been ground separately from this section here. You can also adjust the zero position of the saw. This is a little complicated but the instructions are in the manual. Anyway it suddenly clicked to me that I've been sent a free saw. God damn it. They can send me another one. I specifically mentioned the reasons why I wanted the saw replaced and well, another box came. Ooh, it smells like perfume in here. So this is the second one. Got another one there. This one had a few problems with it. The fence was leaning forward at the top and well, they just weren't lined up properly. This rotating piece here is about two or three mil higher than the two wings. So when you put a piece of material on it, you're actually lifting your material up and potentially adding a few mil to the, uh, to the 90 degree cut. One, two, three. I began checking the second machine. The fence was still leaning forward and this time the wing on the right hand side had a slight gap between the two sections. I think the guy who checks everything must have a real dud square. Is that kind of the same? I've got this stupid thing here, I had to open the box again. You can actually see it's really not even here. Nice big gap there. Get my fingernails in. Oh, come on. Wow, oh, I can actually see. Uh, bit of pen mark there. I think they've actually cut this for me. It's definitely a bit better but it's not perfect. I mean really the top should have just been milled with the wings at the same time. Pen mark everywhere and it's sharp. Burrs under here. Let's see. 
see what happens if I grind those down. Maybe I should uh, open the box up again and uh, take the right hand side one off the old one. See if that fits a bit better. So that's the one from the first one. Yeah, that looks a lot better. This one's going back. I decided to try square the fence to the bed myself. So the piece of material that's basically setting the fence square is just here and that section there. This has all been ground down to make space for the pivoting table. I stuck the fence to a piece of MDF using strong double sided tape. I also put a few screws down and after setting the fence blade to 90 degrees I cut a wafer thin slice off the base. Okay, so I'm not worried about it being square this way because I can do that later. I'm just going to bolt these down so they're tight and then check. It's definitely a lot better. Still a little bit of a gap there. Here it knocks on there. Uh, I'm not sure whether to try and take this apart. What could go wrong? There could be ball bearings in here, springs, all sorts of things. Okay. Locking that. Yeah, they've definitely cut it. It'd be interesting to know anyone else who has this or the previous model whether if they run their fingers around the side of the turning component if there's any burrs or if they notice that it's been cut or ground like someone's just gone at it with an angle grinder to be honest. I wish people signed their work. This turns in a very simple way. You've got these plastic runners here Yeah, whoever levered this to that did it with an angle grinder. I must admit, I'm very impressed. I don't know what it is, but every time I see the bottom of a mitre saw, I think of Star Trek. I decided I should continue modifying the saw and to try get it to perform as well as it can. To turn this from a rough and ready builder's saw into a precision carpenter's one, great for cutting shelves. I made my own zero clearance insert using some 9mm water resistant MDF that I had left over. Fifty, so about fifty. It's quite a simple shape. They haven't done anything unusual with this. It does taper off a little bit here, but it might be the cast. I cut this down to size, and yes, I know what you're thinking. That's a cute mitre saw you have on the floor there. Okay, I've just noticed something else. That, this section here isn't clamping properly. Okay, you can see it's really grinding the paint down. When I lock it down, I can still, still pivot it. I'm going to try and replace this, and if that doesn't work, I'll uh, take this whole section off and put the other one on. I'm going to replace this now from the old one and take that off the new one. I 
that locks and I can't move it. I'm also going to make and install a sacrificial zero clearance fence. I laminated two pieces of MDF together using flat edges to clamp against. Knock a few nails into the end to make sure that the pieces don't slide around. I'm not going all the way down, partly because the nails are longer, but it also means I can see them and pull them out if I have to. Now, the secret to getting this piece nice and flat is using some kind of flat edge and clamping your MDF against that. So you could use an engineer square like this, or I've kept a few pieces of, um, of this Velcro mat there are some mounting holes on the fence, so I think this is something the makers of this saw are inviting you to do. Along with the zero clearance insert, the saw's saving grace is that you are not designed out of the object. The shapes are simple enough so you can make modifications and help the saw evolve. I think what I'm going to do is just offset these a little bit so that after I've made the initial cut, I can keep bringing them forward if I need a clean edge. So we'll do one, two, three, four. I've trimmed off the glue that squeezed out and marked the holes on the metal fence against the MDF. I'm going to drill those out and I'll countersink the surface here. Okay, I've just countersinked the holes. Washer goes in like that. And the machine screw, those. Okay, the final thing to mention is the extraction is atrocious on this saw. I've just noticed the saw catches on the new fence when using the radial arm, but not when cutting straight down. I could take this off and trim another mill or two off, or I could cut some angles. Yeah, it's bollocks. Okay, so I've just checked the pieces and they're all pretty consistent. 18.8, uh, uh, 9 to 18.75, so it's not, that's not too bad. Um, what I should have done was put some pieces of the uh, Velcro mat across this way to check if there was any twist in this when it was gluing, but I don't think this is the problem. So what I'm going to do is shim this out so the the wing nut at the back uh, isn't pushing this too far forward. So if I loosen that up, you can see there's a flat edge here. You could tape something on. Instead, I'm going to use this piece of PTFE, it's 0.25 mil. I bought this stuff to shim out the CNC machine. It's looking pretty banging at the moment. Anyway, all I'm going to do is place that inside like this on the edge facing that way. And I'm going to slide that in. And just make sure that doesn't move. I don't think I'm going to need to do too much more. This end is good. This is not great. There's a light bleed at the bottom. It's the same for that. And that's good as well there, more or less. So it seems square on these sections here, but there's a little bit of gap when you get closer to the blade. And the problem's coming from this section here still. It's leaning up a little bit, which is causing the gap at the bottom of the square. See if I put a bit of weight on there, this begins to close. If I clamp this down, that starts to close up.
If I pop into your mind from time to time and you start to miss me, why don't you subscribe to my Instagram account where I upload sneaky pictures.